Jesus is the King of kings. Call him his name. Jesus is the Lord of lords. He's the King that rules above the nations. Jesus is the King. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
and I can lift my hands The glory and the lifter of my hands I will testify for all eternity
darkness we shine. I love the ashes. I love the ashes we ride. There's no one like you. No like you. What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. No like you. Yes, you're right. There's no one like you. We say, not like you. I got this greater. I got this stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. I got this healer. All some power. I got. I got. I got this greater. I got this stronger. Lord, you are higher than any. I got a seal of oh, some my power. I got, I got, I got is greater, I got is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. I got a seal of some my power. I got, I got. And if I got this for us, and who could ever stop us? If I got this with us, let's take you say. And if our God is for us, and who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, and what can stand again? And if our God is for us, and who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, and what can stand again? And if our God is for us, and who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand again? What can stand again? What can stand again? Walk and stand again. 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 We said, listen, who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the doctor says. Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. The Lord is my life. You are my life. The Lord is my life. We say I have no. I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my life. You are my life. The Lord is my life. I have no reason. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. We say, Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. And who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. The way where there is no way, Jehovah has a final say. Jehovah turns my life around. He turns my life. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has a final say. Jehovah turns my life around. He turns my life. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has a final say. He turns my life around. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there 
there is no way Jehovah has a final say What will I give to you, Lord? I praise Ooh, I praise What will I give to you, Lord? I praise Ooh, I praise What will I give to you, Lord? I praise presence is here to heal to save and to deliver come on just go ahead and feel his presence just begin to put a demand on his presence this morning father we worship you take away every struggle take away every pain God oh Lord we worship you hallelujah
for the next two seconds just lift up your hands and begin to declare his reign upon your life declare his reign his glory he will not share upon that situation lord reign upon that storm lord reign come every storm lord reign rain 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 oh god king of zion reign over my life reign over my home reign over my marriage reign concerning my children reign concerning my business reign let only you be lifted let only you be exalted lord we magnify you reign oh god the one who reigns over the universe reign this morning in our midst reign upon this gathering oh god in the mighty name of jesus people of god lift up your voice and give god praise exalt him he is worthy to be praised what he demands from you this morning is your praise what he requires from you this morning is your worship worship from the soul of your heart from the bottom of your heart give him praise it could have been worse it could have been worse he has brought us thus far the scripture says it costs men to ride upon us but he has brought us to a wealthy place lord where we began is not where we are right now we are grateful for where you have brothers we are grateful for what you have done we are grateful for what you are doing we are grateful for what you have not done lord we are grateful for what you will not do lord we remain grateful lord receive our praise this morning receive all the glory and thanks oh god it belongs to you and you alone let no man share in this glory lord we ascribe it all to you in jesus mighty name we have worship in jesus precious name we have given thanks in jesus mighty name we have given praise can somebody give the lord a big hand clap of praise amen hallelujah thank you thank you daughters of zion amen so this morning we'll take our de declaration amen but first of all as we do it we'll declare our identity in christ jesus amen i am a new creature i am born of god I am born of God. The evil one cannot touch me. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am free from the law of sin. I am free from the law of death. I am the redeemed. I am redeemed from every curse. Curse of sin. I am redeemed from the curse of sickness. I am redeemed from the curse of poverty. I am redeemed. I have a living hope. A hope that is sure. I have a living hope. The hope that cannot fail. I have a living hope. A hope that is steadfast. And so I cannot be moved. I cannot be moved. Because God is my rock. I will not be moved. So this week of March. As I round up the week of March. The Lord will be my shield. The Lord will be my buckler. The Lord will be my fortress. The Lord will be my deliverer. The Lord will be my strength. The Lord will be my salvation. The Lord will be my high tower. As I call upon his name, the Lord will hear me. And he will save me from every enemy. He will save my children from the hands of the wicked. He will save me from the hands of the wicked. In the name of Jesus, as I round up this month of March, the Lord will direct my path. The Lord will direct my steps. In the name of Jesus, as I round up this month of March, I decree that my horn is exalted like that of a unicorn. He anoints me daily with fresh oil. In the name of Jesus, as I round up this month of March, I begin to break forth. I break forth on every side. I blossom on every side. In the name of Jesus, I am fruitful. Every dryness in me become a fruitful land. In the mighty name of Jesus, as I round up this month of March, by the favor of the Lord, my mountain will stand. My mountain will stand and it shall stand strong. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will increase my greatness and comfort me on every side in the name of jesus as i meditate on the word of the lord as i meditate day and night i shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters i will bring forth my fruits my leaf will not wither my leaf will not wither 
whatsoever I do, it shall prosper in the name of Jesus. In my business, whatsoever I do, it shall prosper in the name of Jesus. In my career, whatsoever I do, it shall prosper in the name of Jesus. In my academics, whatsoever I do, I declare it shall prosper in the name of Jesus. I receive power to tread upon every power of the wicked in the name of Jesus. I receive power to tread upon every trap of the wicked in the name of Jesus. The Lord will give his angels charge over me in the day, in the night, the angels surrounds me in the name of Jesus. The angels of the Lord delivers me in the name of Jesus. He will hide me. The Lord will hide me under the hand, O oh God, under his hands in the name of Jesus. Oh, my soul begin to prosper. I declare that my health will not fail me. I declare that the health of my children will fail not. In the mighty name of Jesus, I prosper in all that I do. In the name of Jesus, despite all that I've been through, despite all that I'm going through, I have come to my place of the world, the place. I have come to the place of rest. I have come to the place of joy. I have come to the place of peace. In the name of Jesus, 2022, I declare you are my place. You are my year of the world of place. You are my year of the world of place. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, no more struggles. I have come to the place of rest. I have come to the place of favor in the name of Jesus. If I were you, I will begin to declare his word. I have come to my world of place. I have come to the place of my prosperity. In my body, I prosper. In my business, I prosper. In my career, I prosper. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever my hands find that to do, the Lord will bless. In the name of Jesus, the angels of the Lord will take charge over my life. In the day, in the night, I will not be at the wrong place at the right time. The Lord will go ahead of me and he will order every of my steps. The Lord will go ahead of my children. He will order every of their steps. The evil one will not see them. The eye of the wicked will not behold them. We will not walk into the trap of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will keep and sustain us. The Lord will be our shield and our buckler. The Lord will be my defense. Even as I ride into the, as I round up the month of March, the wicked one will not overshadow me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will see the end of March. I will march into the, the month of April. The Lord will go ahead of me. He will prosper me in every of my ways. No plague shall come near my dwelling. No power of the enemy will walk upon me. I tread upon snakes and scorpions. Every power of the enemy I destroy. The hand of the enemy will not rest upon my Lord. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon the Lord of my children. It is well with my soul. It is well with my body. It is well with all that concerns me it is well with my marriage it is well with this ministry in the mighty name of jesus we will not die but live to declare the glory of god in the land of the living as a church we will not gather to mourn as a church we will not gather to bury as a church we will not gather concerning anyone in the mighty name of jesus lord your hand will be mighty upon us by the favor of the lord our mountain is standing by the favor of the lord my mountain is standing stronger in the mighty name of jesus oh lord the shadow of the enemy will not overwhelm us your angels will take charge of our lives oh your presence will be mighty upon our lives oh god we will not lose your presence we will not lose your grace we will not lose your glory in the name of jesus we receive grace oh god to stay oh god even under your wings tonight in the mighty name of jesus we ask oh god that the blood of jesus will speak concerning us in the day in the night your blood will speak it will speak healing it will speak prosperity in the mighty name of jesus it is all well with all that consensus oh lord you will put laughter in our mouths oh god you will put the songs of deliverance in our lips as we round up this month of march ah libra su take it it is your presence will be awesome oh god you will turn things around 
Oh, you are the God of the last minute. It's not too late. The Spirit of God is saying he will do it and he can do it. He will do it and he can do it. I don't know who that word is for. But he's saying it's not too late. It is where man ends that he begins. Because he will not share his glory. Father, we thank you for your word. Hallelujah. If you believe that word is for you, just give the Lord a big hand of praise. And I need you to shout a big amen. In Jesus' name we have declared. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Awesome, gracious, and merciful presence. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll allow the kids go to their classes while we move forward, please. <laughs> Thank you. Just move to the other half of the auditorium. Uh, if you feel more comfortable to sit as a family, uh, you can allow a seat between you and the next person. But let's move forward, please. Yes, thank you. Okay, we'll allow nursing mothers. Um, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, if you are uh, here with your spouse, please, you need to sit side by side this morning. If you're here with your spouse, you need to sit side by side this morning. Amen. Uh, so the late commands will be the one that are back benches. Amen. Good morning one more time. Thank you. And this morning. Hmm. This morning, we're talking marriage. If you are single, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to be well prepared for this institution. If you are married, the best thing you can also do is to upgrade your knowledge base. Upgrade your knowledge base. From the book of Genesis, the very beginning, God who created everything and saw that all was good, said, it is not good that man should be alone. He said it. He saw the work of creation and saw that everything was good to behold. And he said, there's something missing. It is not good that man should be alone. And by the time we got to the book of Ecclesiastes, it was already saying woe to him that is alone. Think about it. That's a negative pronouncement. Woe to him that is alone. Alone. No doubt, loneliness has been uh, the number one problem of humanity. Loneliness. People do crazy things because of loneliness. They even commit suicide because of loneliness. Think about it. By 1890, the divorce, the divorce cases that we had in America as at 1890 was 5,000. 5,000. By the time it was 1970, we had over a million divorce cases over a million in the state of tennessee we had more divorces than marriages think about it yeah it's a very challenging institution marriage you know some people try to pat your back and tell you marriage is easy <laughs> yeah. But for me, I tell you straight, marriage is hard. Every marriage walking is because people are walking very hard on those marriages. Marriage is an institution that can confuse anyone. Like how else can you describe an institution where many are praying? To get in 
and many are praying to get out. <laughs> how, how can you describe such an institution? Think about it. I remember when I was getting married to my wife, the wedding day, I was joyful. Ah, I've been able to arrest, capture this one. <laughs> You know, and you know, all throughout the ceremony, my father was smiling and rejoicing. So I thought. So after the ceremony, we got into uh, his uh, private place, and he said to me, "He said, I saw the way you were dancing. You were dancing and happy, and even when it was time to sign the marriage register, you danced." And you were, as you were signing that marriage register, do you know what I was thinking? I was telling myself, mm, this one doesn't know it. <laughs> He's signing into the prison of Queen forever. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunately, that's the way uh, most men, that's the conclusion of most men. When it comes to the institution of marriage, they believe that women are necessary evil. Say, God forbid. Say, that's not my portion. Yes. That's, that's the institution that we find ourselves very, very complicated. Institution. And the reason why we find it difficult is that we're not prepared you just say to yourself when i get to the bridge i'll cross it <laughs> now you are the bridge <laughs> you don't have what it takes to cross that bridge so you know what you did you decided to blow off the bridge <laughs> And you have many examples of people who decided to just blow off the bridge. So, Psalm chapter 11 verse 3, it says, if, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can they, God wanted it to have a taste of heaven. He wanted humanity to have a taste of heaven. So he gave us the institution of marriage. So marriage is not supposed to be endured. It's supposed to be enjoyed. For any reason why you are not enjoying your marriage is because the enemy has done something. And one of the things that the enemy has done is to deform your thinking. Your, your thinking. It deforms your thinking. So even while you are entering into that institution with the wrong mentality, you are failed already. You are failed already. And you know, why is the devil always attacking marital destinies? You know, I worked in one of the biggest marriage ministries uh, in West Africa. Blessed memory uh, with Pastor Bimbo Odukoya. I was privileged. It was just a privilege. It wasn't that I was it. You know how it is. It was just a privilege. And we had many ladies, good jobs, highly prosperous, upward mobile, career-wise, but no marriage. We had many men too, but no marriage. Very successful men, but no marriage. The devil is attacking that area of your life. And the worst thing you can do is to just surrender that area to the devil. If you've been married a number of times and you've said to yourself, I don't want to try anymore. I don't think this marriage thing is for me. The, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the devil just won. No matter how you try to paint it, the devil just won. Because that's where he wants to have it. The plan of God for your life cannot emerge without a stable and a blissful marriage or marital destiny. It can't. That's why the devil is attacking the institution. It says, He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, not necessary evil. 
a good thing that's what the word of god says find that a good thing a woman is a woman a woman has a mechanism on the inside that mechanism is called womb a woman has a physical womb he has a spiritual womb that's why the, the story is told of a lady and her husband they drove into a gas station and the lady discovered that the gas station attendant was a hex so she introduced her husband to the hex they left they drove off and the lady and the man who has become very successful the husband the man uh, the lady eventually married you know you know with pride said to her thank god you didn't marry that guy thank god you married me if you had married that guy you would have ended up a wife of a gas station attendant guess what the woman said she said you're wrong if I'd married that guy he would never as him have ended up a gas station attendant why because a woman has two wombs the physical womb for babies and the spiritual womb for destinies for destinies that's why the word of God says, he that findeth a wife has, no, has not found a necessary evil. He has found a good thing and obtained favor from the Lord. It's not the favor you struggle with. It's the favor that you obtain from the Lord. That you obtain from the Lord. It is a good thing to be married. Can we celebrate all the married people in our midst? You see, you are not clapping very well. Because, listen to this, it's not about getting married. It's about staying married. That's where the challenge is. Every divorcee has a story to tell. But guess what? God is not buying those stories. And one of the stories that they tell is that I married the wrong person. Pastor, I mismarried. I mismarried. unfortunately it's the man or the woman that you are married to that becomes your wife or your husband it's not the hex that you will have loved to have married so next time single ladies next time you meet a guy that says uh, if I had met him earlier you will, you will have, I will have married you and not to that woman that's that's a dangerous man that's not a man to listen to the institution of marriage is bound by covenant by covenant by covenant it's not a contract it's a covenant my life for your life that's what a covenant is my life for your life you see so when you are still struggling with car houses money you don't understand the institution of marriage because if you're still struggling with cars money houses you can't operate at that level my life for your life that's that's the covenant of marriage so this morning quickly I'm going to talk about five things that you you should know about the institution of marriage most people are not prepared so they fail they fail woefully or they struggle they struggle they struggle have you ever had a boss 
it was closing time and the boss was in he got to go home you don't have to ask another question just know that home is not fun yeah you, you think the you think the boss is a workaholic no home the woman at home she's a yaman tanga <laughs> you know five things that you do not know about marriage that is really really you know messing up things for you five things are you ready are you good to go this morning number one the strong the strongest area of marriage is the spiritual dimension of marriage marriage is spiritual marriage is spiritual marriage is spiritual marriage is spiritual how long will it take you to know that why the only reason why christians are the ones with good marriages is because your closeness to god makes marriage easy in other words that's why i say you should not marry a non-believer don't marry a non-believer don't marry a nominal christian marry a born again child of god don't marry a nominal christian marry a born again child of god and you have to be born again yourself for you to qualify uh, for a child of god you know the closer each participant in the marriage get closer to god the easier they get closer to one another because marriage is spiritual when you get married you have just admitted the assets and liabilities of the other person spiritually have you ever had a case of someone who got married and everything started to go down in Africa they're gonna call an emergency family meeting they're gonna say the leg of this your wife is <laughs> not good it's because marriage is spiritual it's because marriage is spiritual it's not because our leg is no marriage now before your spiritual stamina was for you to protect your life and your destiny alone once you get married the battle of that woman becomes your battle everything she's she carries spiritually is made available into your life they just go rush into your life so god help you she's carrying demons that's what you have to fight that's what you have to fight so one of the things to test for when you're getting married to somebody is the liberty test it says where the spirit of the lord is there is what liberty liberty test how do we test for liberty singles peace joy and righteousness that's how we test for liberty how peaceful is the life of this person if the is the life disjointed run for your life except you hear god that that's your assignment that's your ministry can you just measure peace in the life of this person well, well no it's not time to look out for money and how prosperous the person is it's time to test for liberty and where we start from is peace how peaceful is this person one of the desires of every man is to marry a peaceful amiable wife one of the desires of every woman is to marry a peaceful and amiable man not a troublemaker i know someone when he's coming and he's happy you can be happy you are permitted to be happy but when he's coming from work and he's sad and you are happy around him he will turn that your joy he will just 
manufacture or bring out something that will corrupt your joy one of the things you must test for is peace mature singles or maybe you want to try again in marriage it's not money it's peace how peaceful is this person why because there are misunderstandings in marriage and people will have to make compromises the peaceful person is always letting things go let things go the troublesome person is always complicating issues you need to test for peace how peaceful is this person number two you need to test for joy you see all these products we're discussing this morning they don't have it in the kingdom of darkness peace is not a product on the shelf in the kingdom of darkness joy is never they can't even fake it they don't have it they don't have it how joyful is this person you say where you have missed it oh many of us is how rich and well wealthy is this person how comfortable is this person no how peaceful how joyful is this person number three righteousness ability to do what god says you test for that a man that does not love god eh, is a matter of time a man that does not love god is a matter of time that's why one of the things when you go visiting your intended one of the things you must look out for is how he treats people in their low estates <laughs> oh don't be deceived or how he's treating you you are the sugar you are the credit that can never be exhausted on his you are the honey you are, don't be no don't be just watch how he treats people in their low estate if that person is disrespectful of people in their low estate run for your life remember you don't have enough time to prove so you must know how to test you can't spend one year testing this person then you discover that uh, then you try another another uh, two years of your life no you must know how to test for these things quickly 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 marriage is spiritual beloved i already know that when i get married my the battles of my wife will be added to my battles remember i'm the man i'm the head that's why a man that has not developed spiritual stamina one time pastor here the boy preached a prayer <laughs> preached a message that our generation our generation attacked he said don't marry a woman that cannot pray for one hour don't, don't. you will struggle through life you will struggle through life our power base in the kingdom is prayers it's prayers every day every day every minute as much as we can it says pray without ceasing prayer why because marriage is spiritual so when you want to marry a man that has not developed spiritual stamina it's a matter of time why because marriage is spiritual i have a lot to say on that but i i better move if i'm going to be able to touch number two running a marriage without a structure is to have a marriage without a future you know why we marry why we struggle in marriage because you are running that marriage without a structure God who instituted marriage introduced structures there is no way romantic love can sustain marriage forget it in two years you're gonna come down from cloud nine there is no way the beauty of your wife and sustain the institution of marriage 
there is no way your money your money money can sustain marriage the other person will soon be tired of money will say to herself or to himself i'd rather go sleep under the bridge than enjoy this money with this kind of man or this kind of woman have you ever discovered that when nigerians go to africa and they say i want a wife that will obey me because their definition of submission is not god's definition so they go to africa and they bring a village wife <laughs> i hope you're not from the village <laughs> i hope they didn't bring you from the village <laughs> and they, br they, brought it. they bring a village wife initially it's always cool because the village babe is rejoicing at long last i'm in america glory be to god i'm in america ah oh, after america is heaven <laughs> then she started to develop herself then she started to develop herself then she started to develop herself then she's okay career wise earning big pay the next thing she wants to do that's a question you will forever ask yourself is this my spouse the, the right person for me even when you've been married for 20 years that question will continue to come into your heart then she gets all the money then she says no i cannot stay in this toxic relationship anymore this is not a relationship between husband and wife it's a relationship of the oppressor and the oppressed master and slave master and what slave the oppressed and lives that's why no matter how much god says do not divorce a bad marriage is like air you will you will run for your dear life a bad marriage is like hell you will run for your dear life how can you run a marriage without a structure how can you depend on things that are not reliable to sustain marriage emotions that's so why you ask a lady, why you not, why you, why do you want to divorce? I say, I'm not feeling anything. You know that that person's knowledge is small. How can feeling define love? How can feeling, feeling does not define, your, 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 your emotion goes in the direction of your thought. Have they told you? that the reason why you're not feeling right about your spouse is because the offense and bitterness over time has brought about wrong thinking so you will not be favorably disposed towards him and over time there'll be dryness that's why love is not a feeling ladies and gentlemen love is a decision a decision that's why God made sure you came to the altar, you took those vows, because love is a decision, it's not a feeling. It has nothing to do with feeling, it's a decision. And one of the decisions you can make in the realm of love is to tell yourself, I will treat my spouse right all the days of my life. When I feel like it, when I don't feel like it, I will treat my spouse right all the days of my life let's talk about the structure quickly i have just 30 minutes to finish this message let's talk about the structure in marriage so that from today you will not you will not play uh you know try your luck guess what you won't do it in marriage there's a structure number one how the structure of marriage begins is that you leave your family father and mother and cleave to your wife there must be a living 
That's why I know I'm very close to my brothers. I have three brothers from my mom. But the moment they got married, our relationship became secondary. I already know it's secondary. If I continue to play that relationship as a primary relationship, I'm going to mess up their marriage. I'm going to mess up their marriage. And that's what some of us here are doing. We have messed up our siblings' marriages. Marriage is mind your business. That's marriage. You've messed up other people's marriages. Oh, he's my brother. Oh, my brother's wife must walk like this. My brother's wife must cook like this. Now you are wondering why you are now reaping the harvest in your own marriage. You are wondering, is the seed you sown? The harvest has come. You want to run away? God says, I won't answer that prayer. That's why an average divorcee it takes a minimum of five years for heaven to respond to them. Five years. Oh, pastor, so what happens? They try to help themselves. Every fast move you can see, they are the ones trying to help themselves. They are the ones trying to... In anybody's marriage, if they don't have anything good to contribute, eh? keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. That's why you don't bring people into your marital space. Your matrimonial home is not a guest house. The Shunammite woman had an apartment outside her immediate territory. Your matrimonial home is not a guest house. Every visitor, we must know when you come and when you will exit. And it must be completely short term. It can be ah, when oh welcome, Mama. When are you leaving? I don't know. Ah no, no, no. When I got married, because I had all, I already acquired all this knowledge. When I got married, I told my siblings, "Excuse me, my queen is coming to our territory. She cannot be inferior to anyone." So you will have to excuse me. And because over time, I had, um, I had trained them. I discipled them in the kingdom. So they were not offended. They knew, they knew that pastor would chase us out of this place. <laughs> yeah, they knew. That's, that's the problem some of us have. You married your wife. And your wife met some powers and principalities in your house. And you are wondering why there will not be tension. There will be tension. The tension is simply, you met me here. We came to marry you and we brought you into this house. Simple. That's why you can't run your marriage in another person's matrimonial home. No, you can't. As a couple, you can't share a flat with another couple. Did you hear me? I should collect money when you are coming in. Yeah. Because this is a wisdom that will help you for life. For life. You can't. So there's a structure. You leave, then you cleave. Leave your family. Leave them. Don't have eyes. You, you know, some people are from very wealthy families. So now that they have married an upcoming man yes or upcoming lady they still have eyes for the level of wealth in their father's family no that's wrong that's going to mess up your marriage you start together from where you are it's not that your family members are saying let's buy you a car and your husband doesn't have a car and you say, oh, well, my husband is insecure. If he's secured, if he's really a man that is secured, he won't have any problem with the car coming from my family. Can you help me say foolishness? foolishness. We're not calling you. We only said foolishness.
that's the beginning of the structure that i leave the family i've always known to start that's why listen I, I don't care how the family you were born into is structured but this one that you have the right the power to start ah uh, it must not be like where you are coming from it must not be like where you are coming from you that's the power you have I, i'm from a dysfunctional our own marital ring bed. and i said to myself ah when i marry i will make my marriage the very best that will guarantee peace for my children so that's the beginning of marriage now when you now come in god says this is how to come in make sure you don't come in with infidelity yeah make sure you continue to keep that man that woman in suspense of your nakedness because i need that and god is saying i need it for some reasons number one so that you can build the trust you know some people when they rush into sex before marriage they think oh god is just no he's, he, he, he has his wisdom he's saying i need trust i need to build trust so that there will be no tension in your marriage because your spouse says if this guy can keep himself during courtship then i don't have to be afraid when other ladies are around him after marriage i don't have to be afraid i don't have to be afraid you might not have been born again when you got married but right now that you are born again you have to do a lot to establish trust What is the other thing that God does when he says do not allow infidelity or do not defy yourself before marriage? The other thing he's doing is that he wants everybody in that journey to be looking forward to honeymoon. Honeymoon. With that posture alone there's a level of strength it gives to your marriage so in case you don't believe in sex uh, uh, abstinence uh, you are at the receiving end it's not god that is at the receiving end so can we put on our hair conditions i think we maybe we'll take it off and restart it again thank you it's cold really okay maybe i'm because i'm fighting you <laughs> so that's the second thing that determines the structure of marriage number three this leadership in marriage oh pastor i just want friendship i don't want leadership that's not marriage this leadership in marriage and this is where many women fear that's where they have problem with god that a man is a leader and is a leader not because you are inferior you are not inferior there must always be leadership in any union and god chose the man it was divine election it is not that the woman is inferior the woman is divine the man is divinely selected to be the head and any leadership that's the man he says as unto the lord so you are obeying the man as if it's God. Why? Because divine agenda on this planet, unfortunately, women, they don't like to hear this. But if you are a Christian and you fear and honor God, you will hear this very well. Divine agenda on this planet has the male gender as reference point. Divine agenda as, let's, let's say it, one, two, three, go. Divine agenda has the male gender as reference point now divine agenda has the female gender as support system support system so what god did is to put the favor in the life of the woman great favor upon the life of a woman and he put the authority in the hand of a man you see 
even in the kingdom of God, God has the wisdom of checks and balances. What God is saying is that you, this man, we know that you can use your authority in a negative way. We know that absolute power corrupts absolutely. We know. So I'm giving you the authority. But the favor is upon your wife. So what God is saying is that man, if you use your favor in a way that gladdens the heart of your wife. You see how it is defined. That's why your explanation to us, you will win the argument, but you won't win the favor of God. You won't. You will gather a point against your wife, but you can never win the favor of God. You can even win before the pastor, but you cannot win before God. Because the, the, the condition is not ambiguous. It's a straight jacket. It's a straight jacket. Use your favor. Use your authority in the way that gladdens the heart of your wife. And my wife is not... Your wife is unique. Your wife is what? Unique. Don't say, don't compare my wife with your wife. Ah, don't say I love Mrs. Mo. You know what Mrs. Mo is giving me behind the scene? Come on. <laughs> eh? A couple were always quarreling. So the neighbor, remember someone said, the first year of your marriage, the man, the man talks and the woman listens. The second year of your marriage, the woman talks and the man listens. The third year of your marriage, they both talk and the neighbors listen. <laughs> a couple was always, the wife was always shouting in the neighborhood, screaming. So the neighbors felt, ah, this is a troublesome woman. They, they've all made up their mind that this is a, this troublesome woman. Ah, this man is so unfortunate to have a troublesome woman so one day they fought so the neighbors quickly gathered and they discovered that it was the man that was pinching <laughs> the wife guess what that's what some men do that's what some men do you are the troublemaker and every action gets an equal from unbeliever not from you you, you have the fruit of the spirit. You have the wisdom of God. So, all this epistle I've been saying since is that the man is the head and the woman is expected to submit. Submission is not control. It's not is the man's jurisdiction to provide direction for you and guess what every human being has the tendency of rebellion that means you nobody likes to be told what to do you see what you are up against if you want to cultivate submission nobody including me likes to be taught likes to be told what to do so you must crush the flesh so that we can successfully tell you what to do you must crush the flesh crush the flesh that means nobody is born humble nobody is born submissive in fact the greatest undoing of submission is your independent mindedness oh pastor but I I'm an independent lady. I've been independent from when I started, you know, taking care of myself. I've been independent. Yes, that's the greatest harm to your marital destiny. That you are independently minded. The design of man is this. That a woman is under father. A woman is not supposed to leave that covering until the man, that's why he's the father, the handsy hover to your husband in marriage 
you leave that covering of being under the authority of father so wise ladies they know they know that although i'm from a dysfunctional arrangement i don't have a responsible my father I don't work her <laughs> i don't even know his, his present address so what they do is that they look for structures that they can submit to structures in the office they delight in obeying their boss not questioning their boss so in church they delight in obeying the pastor just make sure that the pastor is not an immoral one very important there are everything that that can be forgiven in ministry but we can forgive a pastor who takes advantage of our sisters our daughters and our wives no i mean we can when i say we can forgive it's not that we can forgive it's that we run for our dear lives we run for our dear lives if you stay in that kind of a church you are a compromiser yourself it means there's a club of big boys in the church feasting on ladies feasting on ladies it makes it makes marriage easy when you know your role I'm here to submit to my husband some of us we've been married for 10 years you've not started to cultivate submission that's why the, your next level according to divine agenda cannot unfold you are hindering the destiny of that man why because you are making it li listen to this can i give you an example N naba was a foolish man but he was prosperous how he had a submissive wife <laughs> A foolish person so god blesses the decision of foolish men yes with a submissive wife what god uses in a marriage is your submission it's not your strong point oh pastor show me you want me to show you first peter chapter 3 verse 7 no time you say anytime we begin to talk about marriage like this no time why a whole lot to teach you a whole lot Please stay with us throughout this month and next month stay with us stay with us stay with us first peter chapter 3 verse 7 i'll be out of your face in seven minutes first peter chapter 3 verse 7 husbands in the same way be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect did you hear that Treat them with respect, with, with honor. God went a step with honor. Yes. Have you ever discovered that nations who respect women, they prosper more than nations, African nations who disrespect women? Let me bring you home. African nations who disrespect women. Say, pack out, pack out of my house. Take your children. So, look at the wickedness of a man in Africa. A, a woman, a vulnerable woman, being, will now take the children out. So developed country says, you are the one that will move out. <laughs> you, you will move out. That's by Blaker. Yeah. Clap for Jesus. Yes. A godly man unfortunately has issues he knows that he cannot send kids out with their mother you are the one you should know bible you are the one that will go out i don't want that will go out and send us your new address <laughs> so that we can take child support yeah so i presided over a case the man in his late 50s yes related to me so the man confidently in this instant brought the case to me he thought because i'm his family member would be partial <laughs> he doesn't know the kind of pastor is coming to me yes he brought the case to me so i took them through counseling for about one or two months the counseling even took us 
extended almost a whole year so we concluded okay give this woman a thousand dollars to take care of these kids as we walk on every month as we walk on how this marriage will be restored so we did a lot on how this marriage will be restored it was it was cooperating it was really really cooperating so and i thought it was real i didn't know that it was you know liquidating all his assets and sending it to africa yeah so that when i didn't know so he gave the woman the the first month by the second and it's the man that is wrong all the way very good well behaved the lady Gave the woman the for the one thousand dollars as we agreed the first month. By the second month, the woman called me, no money again. No. So I went to him. Ah, why are you doing this? So I spoke to him, respectful manner, but you know my hand. You know now, you know my hand. One day, I was I, I switched for my son, and he said, "You just you were just laughing now. What, Daddy? You just switched." Say, I'm a pastor, I switch like that to readily. <laughs> you know, my hand is hard. So, we succeeded in bringing the marriage back again. Suddenly, the lady called me again that the marriage, the guy has uh, walked away again. Suddenly, we just received a letter from the lawyer divorce proceedings. Can you imagine divorce proceedings? Laying all sorts of claim against the woman. So, so it was so obvious to me now that it was playing not just the woman, it was playing, it was playing me too. <laughs> so I said to him, Why are you doing this? So we met and I said to him, Why are you doing this? He now went to tell my family members that me, I like his wife. And I want to have something to do with the wife. Say, black bear. But yeah, that's why you don't believe a one sided story. Please don't believe a one sided story. Please don't believe a one sided story. Now listen to both sides before you are able to make up your mind and walked away from lovely children you see irresponsible men lovely children so those of us who have lovely husbands responsible husbands we should appreciate <laughs> we should appreciate the scarcity of responsible uh, men there's what yeah scarcity so if you have responsible husband please celebrate that man men are walking away without looking back without looking back mrs mo celebrate me <laughs> <laughs> amen start your feet let's close you like just too much <laughs> Celebrate grace. Amen. Grace for marital bliss. Grace for marital bliss. Grace for marital bliss. I receive in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, be, be gracious to us concerning our marriage. Be gracious to us concerning our marital destiny. Be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. Yes, Lord. We can't do this without you. Be gracious to us. We draw strength. We draw grace from you. We draw wisdom from you, Lord. Be gracious to us, Lord. Be gracious to us. Yes, my Father. Be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. Be gracious to us. Will you pray for yourself? Be gracious. Remove, remove yokes from my marital destiny. Destroy the yoke of no marriage, Lord. Destroy the yoke of no marriage. Bring me to the place of liberty. 
bring me to the place of liberty 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 yes lord makatorabate de boskoroboria riketene meketorabaria open another page for me lord as many that have tried and they have failed in marriage in our midst open give them another chance lord as many that are married lord strengthen their home and their marriage lord oh every rebellious spouse lord change them break the heart of stone and give them the heart of flesh Oh, masquerable sherry, touch my marriage, touch my home, touch my marital destiny. Oh, masquerable shenna make it to Roboria. Riketona masangara bocotona matiaka. Namatele botona masangara botona masakariaka. Rakato namatele bocotona maria. Rikeshe ne meketo namatia karakara bocotona maria. Give me grace to respect my wife. Give me grace to respect my husband. Give me grace, Lord. Give me grace, Lord. Give me grace, Lord. Let joy be upon my marital destiny. Let peace be upon my home. Let righteousness be exalted in my home. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, my Father. 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 Oh, bliss, bliss upon my marriage. Bliss upon my marriage. Yes, as many that are single, I receive breakthrough for you in that area of your life. Your God or this spouse will locate you. In the name of Jesus, your God or this spouse will locate you. I can't even hear your amen. Your God or this spouse will locate you. In the name of Jesus, barriers are removed obstacles are removed we ask that the holy spirit will move upon your life and bring you to that place of breakthrough in the name of jesus and grace to stay married we receive for you in the name of jesus yes lord i like our eyes closed and our head bowed as we close you want to surrender to jesus or you're a backsliding Christian, you just want to give, rededicate your life to Jesus this morning. Just raise up your hand where you are, Pastor. I want to surrender my heart. I want to surrender my heart. I want to surrender my heart. I love him. I love Jesus. My Savior, my Redeemer, my Helper. I want to surrender my heart. I don't want to play games anymore. I want to be true to my maker, my savior, my redeemer. I want to walk before you and be that perfect. I want to love you in the, on the path of righteousness, doing the right things. I want to love you. I want to love you. I want to hold on you with my life and serve you for the rest of my life. If you are here in our midst and that's your decision, just raise up your hand where you are. Raise up. Pastor, that's my decision this morning. I just want to fall in love with the master. I just want to fall in love with the Lord. That's my decision this morning. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Celebrate grace this morning. Is that the very best you can offer? Celebrate the one who reigns for it. I can't even hear your rejoicing. Celebrate the one who, who lives forever, who reigns forever. Amen. Let's welcome Dr. Dama as we take our offering tithes and testimonies. Praise the Lord. Offering time. Offering time. Please put your offerings together. Tithes. Ushers are passing the envelopes, I hope. We also give online if you choose to um, via Cash App, dollar sign Purpose Assembly. 
you can give uh, Zell at Kingdom Purpose Assembly at gmail.com. You can also give through the app called Givelify. And you can text give to 833 285 2007. If you choose to give by cash, the ushers are passing the envelopes. May God bless you as you give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Testimonies. 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 I'm sure we have some. Yes. Are you giving one? Okay. You have one? All right, come on. Come on up. 